Hello everyone, today I wanted to just do a little snippet here about hyperreflexia and how we don't need to worry about it with everybody who comes into the office. So Dave here is 48 years old, he's going to turn 49 soon and he comes in for some um, scapular discomfort, cervical spine pain, um, some shoulder discomfort and I always do a neurologic exam on everybody who comes in. And so what I want to demonstrate here is how hyperreflexive he is, but has really no other myelopathic symptoms, okay? So I'm going to have you relax, and you'll see how brisk his reflexes are. Okay, so C5 here at the elbow, C6 here, brachioradialis, C7, relax that arm. So pretty brisk all the way around. He's brisk over here too. Um, and so from there, I go down to the leg, and you can see he's pretty hyperreflexive there also. But when I check his Hoffman sign, he has a negative Lermit sign where you bring the chin down to the chest. He has no bolts of lightning going through his arm. He has negative clonus and he has a negative Babinski sign. We don't really worry about that. But one of our questions was, have you ever had a head injury or anything like that And when you were 20 years old, correct? Yes. You had a motor vehicle accident, struck the windshield. Yes. Pretty hard. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so this hyperreflexia may just be residual from the motor vehicle accident. But really, he's not falling, he's not tripping, he hasn't had a big loss of balance, um, not a lot of dizziness or anything like that. He's just hyperreflexive. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. We're putting him through his regular program, and um, you know maybe if we follow him up in a, six months to a year or so, and uh, he starts to develop a positive Hoffman's or Babinski or Clonus or anything like that, then we look a little bit deeper. But in the meantime, nothing to worry about. So that's just a little example of uh, hyperreflexia and. Um, kind of what it tells us, it paints a little picture, but it's not the whole picture. Thanks.